Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Arizari and uh, welcome to my final presentation for EEE 6512 uh, Image Processing Computer Vision. So I did my project on uh, text and character detection, localization, and recognition in a natural scene. So moving right along, what is optical character recognition? Uh, it is the identification of printed characters using photoelectric devices and computer software. That was the first hit on Google. Now, the importance and use of optical character recognition is really what it's all about. So, you know, thinking about the applications, you have handicap accessibility, you have robotic navigation and scene understanding, data collection for data mining algorithms, um, things like that. So, I'm I'm going to hit on handicap accessibility really quick. Just a little bit of a uh, explanation. So, if we look at this uh, input image here, so say this is uh, you know a web page and a blind person is using a handicap accessible computer. So the computer algorithm would take this white space, plug it into its OCR, and it would spit out you know the ABCs here, just like we see up in this picture, with it, with a few errors. But that's okay. It would send those characters into the microphone uh, and say this runs some software like Microsoft SAM, our favorite, and all of a sudden uh, your computer is talking to you and the blind person can understand what's on the web page. It's amazing. So that is one practical uh, application example of optical character recognition. So moving on to the complications of OCR. Uh, you know, what are some of the things that you run into? Um, well, particularly when you're looking for text regions, uh, you're either looking for a blob or a really defined feature. So things like this highly textured background uh, on the right hand side, um, notice all the, you know, the marbling with the black. Uh, you know, those, those odd shapes really throw off uh, blobs, especially uh, when performing morphological operations. Uh, in addition, the white hotspot from a camera flash, uh, that p uh, spikes pixel intensities around it, uh, and you can see the effects edging out away along my uh, mouse here. You know, those, those cause you to lose edges or characters if they're hidden underneath, which we're about to see. Um, so anything that's not clear, straight, or black and white, it's pretty much going to give you problems. Uh, and all the images that you're seeing in this presentation are taken from the ICDAR 2003 data set. Uh, that's open source and it's an annual competition that's uh, run for uh, OCR. So here's one of the test images. Uh, we got a Marlboro Lights uh, cigarette package with a hot spot in the top left here. So the first thing we do is we're going to convert this image uh, into a grayscale and we're going to apply an adaptive bilateral filter. Um, this filter really just is, it, it's a neighborhood weighting and it really helps to reduce the, the hot spots, especially on the, the fringes around the mid M's and the top of the A. Uh, and then we take uh, the morphological gradient. So the method that I'm going to be using is for the most part morphological um, operations. So we're going to start with taking the gradient because we want these hard edges that you're that you're seeing here uh, along this L and the B, uh, for instance all on the lights. You know they're strong edges and the X and the Y and they really pop out. Uh, so going down the morphological side of my algorithm it actually splits into two different methods uh, morphological and uh, maximally stable extremal regions. Uh, so going down the morphological path, the next thing to do is perform an Atsu method thresholding, uh, and this is used to separate the background and the foreground of the image, um, and it uses a global histogram to do that. So once we're binarized, we're going to open the image with a 3 by one kernel, and this is just to get rid of uh, small blobs and stuff that might be free-floating and causing us noise. Uh, this is to help eliminate the high texture backgrounds. And then we're going to close the image with a 9 by 2 kernel. 
Uh, the reason why it's so extended in the X is so that you can really find those um, consecutive horizontally aligned regions. Uh, for instance, if you look on the image here, uh, the A, the R, the L, and the B are all connected uh, morphologically using the closing. See right here. Um, next we're going to apply uh, the OpenCV's fine contours method which is going to take it's going to find the contour around this entire region that's connected and then after we do that we're going to fit that with a bounding rectangle so it'll give you a big square that goes around this entire region uh, now I apply some filters to these um, mainly to uh, reduce um, the number of false positives so small regions are going to get cut out as well as repetitive regions so at the same time uh, the image gets sent through the uh, MSER um, path and what this does is it uses um, the MSER uh, blob detector um, you know ob uh, detector and we go ahead and we draw all the rectangular regions around that and then we perform an OTSU and then we close to connect uh, closely linked square regions and then um, we find the contours again and we draw bounding boxes around those uh, so now for instance we connect all these inner boxes and then we bind them all together and more filters are applied to reduce these repetitive inside uh, regions so now uh, we have the morphological and we have the MSCR. Uh, they return their rectangular vectors back to the main, and the main sits there and it examines, you know, the vectors uh, of the rectangles from both uh, algorithms. So what it tries to do is eliminate repetitive and redundant uh, rectangles and keep only unique rectangles. So for example here this is an output image um, so the blue regions are the morphological regions and the green regions are ones that are detected by the MSCR algorithm so as you can see the hotspot was too intense on the M for the morphological operation and it probably got caught out cut out of uh, the closing after the Atsu method but uh, the advantage of having two different um, methods to find these characters is is where one fails the other one can pick up in this case MSER uh, did magic um, so here's a sample output uh, and what I'm using for my text recognition is I'm just taking these rectangular regions and putting those into Tesseract OCR's engine to let it try to compute uh, the results as you can see, they're not too good. You know, you get some hits, uh, G, uh, T, S for these regions down here, L, L instead of L, I. Um, but I'm about to show you my test run program. So dot slash main. And I'm just going to flip through a few of these guys for you so you can see my region detection and the output over here. Um, so, yep. It just loops through all these database files of the competition. Oh, see here we got a here in that last image which is nice. Some junk in this image even though we found all the right zones. So there's literally hundreds of these images. I'm sure you guys get the point. That's pretty neat. So real quick I just want to mention about one more thing. Um, the results of the demo. So after doing 70 image, images of the data set, uh, I achieved a 50% error. Uh, but I graded myself pretty harshly on this. So for example, uh, the image on the right, Trinity Street Studios, I found all the letters here. But it didn't correctly match the letter grouping of the competition. So I counted that as a miss, um, uh, as uh, not correct, even though I found all the letters. So my actual letter detection for the good regions is probably a bit higher than 55% uh, error. Um, and lastly, the future research. Um, so I was uh, pretty bummed out about the uh, results of Tesseract's OCR for a natural scene. Um, 
and what I would do, uh, given more time and further research, is largely I'd want to compile a large data set uh, for each individual character, both uppercase and lowercase. Uh, but the real thing here is you're going to want to vary your fonts, your styles, and your sizes. Uh, you know, we're, we're probably talking a good thousand couple images for each character um, to really train this well and for it to be robust enough. Um, but really you want to train it, your own classifier to recognize the features uh, from the above variable data set for each letter. Um, and you can use a probably add a Bayes decision um, when you're looking at your rectangular regions um, to see if it would classify as text or garbage region. Um, so I would add those two features to this program uh, to improve the results. So thank you very much. It's been a great semester. Bye.